am so happy to welcome Brother Sandhu to yes. our show today. Thank you so much. All the way from India. Yes. In fact, in a few hours, you're getting an airplane and going back home. That's right. From right here. Mm -hmm. and, but we're thrilled you're here with us today, and yeah. you're going to be at Prophet Speak. Uh, and that, in fact, all of his speaking, the hours that he's here and everything he's done on this show, plus this Prophet Speak, yeah. plus the Moravian Falls where right. he prophesied uh, at several times he prophesied way before it happened. Yes. The f huge flood in Texas. In Houston, that's right. And shocking prediction yes. that, of course, came true. And so many right. other things that God is speaking to him. And on today's broadcast, he's going to be sharing so much with us. And uh, we're going to be offering all of that video I just talked about, the video from Moravian Falls, right. the That's video right. from this evening's service, so you yeah. won't miss out on a thing right. uh, if you order the, I call it shocking prophecies. <laughs> and uh, right. so if you want to give a little Christmas gift to this ministry of $35, uh -huh. we're going to give you all that video. I mean, hours and hours of the prophetic word from Brother Sandu. Thank, Thank you for you. being Thank here. You. <laughs> Thank you. You were, you found Christ at an age of what, 16, yes, did I hear? Yes, that's right. And uh, you come from Catholic mm -hmm. background and from uh, Hinduism. Yes. And today you're a follower of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. 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 You said you had a, a dramatic, life-changing encounter. What was that? that brought you to the Lord? Yeah, when I was about 15 years old, mm -hmm. I was searching for, to be set free from the cycle of rebirth as the Hindus believe. You know, the Hindus believe there are 84,000 rebirths in a person's life. 84,000 yes. rebirths in Rebirth. one person's life? Yes. Oh my. So, and the goal is to be set free from the cycle of to be born again. And so most Hindus and Buddhists, they believe in practicing good works so that they can be set free from the cycle of being born again to be part of the cosmic universe. Mm. That's the goal of every Hindu. So I prayed very much to all the gods that we worship in our home. In Hinduism, there are 330 million gods. Oh my land. So... In an average Hindu home, they'll worship at least about a dozen gods. So my father was a layman priest. So, and I was trained like to follow his footsteps. Yes. So I prayed very ardently to all those gods that I should be forgiven of all my sins of my past life and so that I can be set free from the cycle of rebirth. But after praying for six months, I felt that my prayers were not answered because the condemnation of sin was still deep within me mm. and I could not be set free. Mm. So I was very, very disappointed that uh, my prayers were not answered and I thought that was because of my past sins, my past life. Mm. I must be a terrible sinner. So the gods are punishing me in this life. So when I was at the end of my fate, I thought that I sh I'm fated to come back again in this world, if not in a human form or in an animal form. That's what the Hindus believe, you know. So while I was in this state, I received a flyer announcing about a Christian meeting. Uh -huh. But I didn't know it was a Christian meeting because the flyer was uh, designed in such a way, it was more scientific. And I was planning to become a medical doctor at that time. So all the topics and the design of the brochure attracted me to go to that meeting. So this was on 1st June 1978. So when I went to the meeting, there was a speaker from America, and he gave a very wonderful teaching on evolution. Hmm. So that appealed to me because it was very scientific. Mm -hmm. So after about 20 minutes of explaining evolution, mm -hmm. he said, this is what science says, let me now tell you what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And then he explained about what the Bible says about salvation, the fall, yes. and redemption through Christ. Yes. And then he said, only Jesus Christ 
can redeem you from all your sins, not blood of goats or bulls or anything. And then he said, all those of you who want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, stand up to your feet and come to the front. So there were about 500 people in the auditorium. And many people stood up to go. I too stood up, not to go to the front, but to go back home. Oh, <laughs> oh no. The reason is because if 330 million gods cannot save me, how can this one God save me? Wow. So that was my reasoning. Sure. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, yeah. since we already have 330 million gods, why accept another God? Mm. That it will make the number uneven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this was my reasoning, you know. And because people on my left, on my right were standing up to go, I could not go anywhere. So I just sat there to look at the fun, whatever was happening. As I was sitting on my chair, a supernatural thing took place. I heard a still small voice from deep within me saying, this is the true God, go and follow him. Mm. It was a real audible voice. Amen. I turned around to see where this voice was coming from. I couldn't see it anywhere, but then I realized it was coming from within me. Mm -hmm. And it kept on repeating itself over and over again. Each time it repeated, it was growing in intensity. This is the true God. Yes. Go and follow him. Mm. Yes. But I was just too stubborn, you know. <laughs> because I, I figured out how can this God just be the true God? What about all our gods that my parents taught me and we grew up in all that? So I just sat on my chair. A little later, the second supernatural thing took place. I felt the chair on which I was sitting began to shake and vibrate. It literally shook. And I was wondering, the, the chair on my right and on my left wasn't moving, but the chair on which I was sitting was literally shaking. Yes. And the thought comes to my mind, get up and go. And the voice was speaking, this is the true God, go and follow him. I just couldn't figure out what was happening. And for fear of falling over, I held on to the handle. Uh. And I would not get up and go. <laughs> and I was seated at the, on the balcony in the auditorium. And then the third supernatural thing took place. I felt a hand below my back and it gently lifted me up to my feet. And I turned around to see there was no hand, but I could tangibly feel a hand. Mm. And I stood up, and this time I determined to go forward. The reason was because I figured out if I don't answer the call now, a fourth thing may take place. <laughs> the hand can grab me and throw me down yeah. from the balcony. <laughs> So, when I was willing to be led, I felt this hand come and grabs my hand, a real hand, mm -hmm. and it gently pulled me down, three flights of steps, mm -hmm. and I came and stood before the pastor. And it seemed, it seemed that he was waiting for me all the while. You know, there were at least about 50 other people who accepted, who answered the altar call that night. And I stood at one corner, and he started praying the sinner's prayer. So I didn't know what is sinner's prayer all about. And I just looked up to the sling and I said, Lord Jesus, if you be the true God, please help me. Mm. Help me get rid of all the sins from my life and set me free from the cycle of rebirth. As soon as I said that, the fourth supernatural thing happened. I felt someone pouring liquid oil on my head. And I turned around to see within a radius of three feet, there was no one standing beside me. Uh -huh. But I tangibly felt this oil flowing all over me. And as it was flowing, I felt a cleansing taking place in my heart. Mm -hmm. It flowed down my hands and then it flowed down my legs. And when it left the toes, a great indescribable peace came and filled my heart. And in that instant, I felt all my sins were forgiven. And at that moment, I knew this Jesus is the only true living God. Oh. <laughs> hey, yeah. you know, so beautiful. The Bible that we build our life on 
says we should have no other gods. And can you imagine having thousands of gods? Millions. 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 330 million. And to be Dear born in God. Christ. And honey, to think about. I can't even imagine it. And brother said to, to think that you were, you like, like other Indians, mm -hmm. how many, how many Hindus in, in India, how many Hindus are there approximately? The population is 1.3 billion. 1.3 billion. And 70% are Hindus. And 70% are Hindus. So when you're born and raised mm -hmm. with that, I mean, that's what you believe as exactly. a child and as mm -hmm. a teenager. It's hard to not believe. It's like most of us were born and raised know, you know about Jesus. It'd be very hard to, to change our minds about him, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that, so that makes perfectly good sense to me what you just shared. Yes. And, and in one year... You felt a call to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Six months after I got saved. Yes. Six. I was studying in high school at the time. And I clearly remember the date. It was March the 14th, 1979. I was walking to school. I was just thinking about God. I had no intention of going into full-time ministry because my ambition was to become a neurosurgeon. So I was gearing my studies towards that direction. And about 20 feet away from the school, I felt like a coin come from heaven and drop inside me. And when it dropped, the word came, God is calling you to the ministry. So that was the word that I got. Mm. And then I went and shared it with my pastor. And then he guided me to go to a Bible seminary. Yeah. Instead of going to a medical school, he said, God, since God is calling you, why are you wasting your time in a medical school? So he guided me to go to a Bible college, but I did not complete a four-year Bible college for lack of funds. And, uh, and then I just began to pray and seek God. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. We have more with Brother Sadhu in just a moment. We want to remind you that Christmas is right around the corner. I think you probably know that. But we still have a few left. And I mean, they have been going by the thousands. That's and so right. if you want to get something for your kids that's different Grand than kids. what most of them have seen before, yes. this is a six-book set for just a love gift of $25. It's incredible. And they, they come in this wonderful cover box and it's six books Lori. yes and hardback books these are um you know stories for kids but really these are stories of the bible and they're good hardback books yes you can throw them even well you shouldn't throw them but <laughs> you know how kids throw things around so well, so what they are is is they have these wonderful hardback covers and you may think the the, the little characters look funny on here well they're not funny they're actually brick like characters or Lego like characters and it's inspired by Lego right your little ones can actually go through read the story and build and you can, or you can read the story and they can build if they're not quite to reading Mondo, yet. I haven't seen a boy that doesn't want <laughs> this book. every young boy every grown man wants <laughs> every Lego lover loves it and yes. it's a Bible stories with the inspiration That's of Legos right. and the kids could actually build stuff uh, from the yes. Bible yes. by looking at the pictures in this. So what you have the book of... No I have Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Which... And then it also comes with this next book. Yes. Which is Joseph and the Colorful Coat. That's right. And th then you have the next book. David and Goliath. And that's a good story. Well, all, of us, all of us short guys love that story. The next <laughs> one is Daniel and the Lion's Den. Yes. And Jonah and the Whale. The Christmas Story. <laughs> so you get six books for the price of two books. That's right. It's a wonderful, wonderful. Plus, Mondo's holding up the double-sided poster, Noah's Ark on one side, and on the other side is Jonah and the Whale. And believe me, kids will always remember <laughs> this we want your kids to get the word of god in their hearts and coming out of their mouths and this is the greatest way to start building their spiritual foundation so if you have more than one story. grandchild you're saying oh you can well you can break them up get them right now free shipping today yes absolutely incredible but anything you see on today's show has to be on today's broadcast yes 
to be free shipping. That's right. And don't forget, as you're watching Brother Sadu with us here today, you must get, this is a must get for every single person watching. This is several hours of Brother Sadu's teaching, being with us here on the Jim Baker Show, being in Moravian Falls, where Rick Joyner's ministry is, and so much more. Several hours. We're probably saying six, seven, maybe even more hours yeah. of, of Brother Sadu and his shocking prophecies. And his prophecy message of the prophet speaks. Yes where we just let them go. Yes. And so that also is going to be in this video. That's right. So that's just for a gift of $35 to the ministry. You'll enjoy every single moment of it. All right. Order your kids' stuff today yes. while they're still in stock. That's and right. And we've got enough, and uh, we'll ship them out immediately. So call right now, 1-888-988-1588, or go to our website, jimbakershow.com. I want to get right to the prophecies. I want to, the most famous prophecy is the Houston, Texas flooding now because mm -hmm. it was so dramatic and millions of people, I think by now, have seen you actually prophesy. And uh, this man in India has TV studios. He has uh, outreach in different parts of the world. And God is using him to speak to the world, yes. not just to the United States, not just to India, but to the, the whole world. Right. What was the date and the time and the place where God first spoke to you that Houston would be underwater? Two years ago, we were invited to speak at a conference in Houston. Mm -hmm. So we were flying from Los Angeles to Houston and uh, I had a very shocking experience when I was in Los Angeles and prior to uh, be at Los Angeles I was speaking at a Chinese church conference in Costa Mesa mm -hmm. so while there uh, do you mind I share with you the background absolutely All do right. whatever you want just while there one afternoon I was just preparing my message when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared before me and I stood up to pay respects to the Lord and ask him, what is it that you want to speak to me, Lord? Without saying a single word, he went and stood before the glass window overlooking the city of Costa Mesa. And uh, I stood beside the Lord, and he never spoke a word for a long time. And then he just, there was a little sorrow on his face, and he turned to me and he said, this day, is going to be destroyed by an earthquake. So I was shocked. I said, Lord, why? He said, don't you know? That was his first question he asked me. Don't you know that there is so much of sin in this state? And this is going to be destroyed by an earthquake. Now, you were in California, mm -hmm. Costa Mesa. Yes. But God spoke to you about the entire state. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Costa Mesa. No. So God's saying this entire state yes. will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And how would it be destroyed, did he say? By an earthquake. By an earthquake. Mm -hmm. This is shocking. It was shocking to me. Yeah. So after the conference in Costa Mesa, I was flying to Houston. So together, did they ever invite you back to that service after? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people don't like bad news, you know. No. <laughs> they really don't. That's what. That's why people, you know, people don't like prophecy. Not everybody likes prophecy. I think you, you folks here, like prophecy. You want to hear what God has to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people don't because they they don't want to. Mm -hmm. They don't want to he hear any bad news. That's right. But. So go on from there. So we were waiting with an, uh, uh, another pastor from Lancaster, California. We were the two speakers at Houston. So at Los Angeles Airport, while we were waiting to board the flight, yes. I was just still pondering about what the Lord told me in Costa Mesa. And I was praying in my heart, Lord, why? Why? The question was there, why? You know, when suddenly I felt the presence of someone standing beside me. 
when i turn around there was this huge angel with a huge sledge hammer uh -huh. on his right hand and when i looked at him he identified that he was the angel of the state of california the chief angel overseeing the affairs of the state of california and the amazing thing was he was standing beside me and also outside at the on the airport as a huge gigantic figure you know the icon of the restaurant in LAX airport yes so he was standing by that side yes. huge at least 50 to 70 foot tall and then he said this city is marked for destruction and then he also said this nation is marked for destruction in three places in the United States the angels of God have been assigned to destroy this nation with earthquakes and when he spoke when he first spoke saying this city meaning Los Angeles I saw hundreds of angels standing in one straight line all along the coast of uh, California mm -hmm. all with sledgehammers in their hands waiting to struck the ground at a given notice from God and what I, I do not know much about the geography and the history of the US you know but a few months later Hollywood produced a movie called the San Andreas that's right and I was so surprised because that's exactly where I saw all the angels standing so now I know where they stood was where the San Andreas fault is yes and three other places so besides San Andreas the two other places have been marked for destruction mm. uh, so so you say when you say three pieces mm -hmm. how did that work out so where did where was that and what was that all about well I can't say it's a thus says the Lord word uh -huh. for the other two places but when I tried to look at the map trying to remember where I saw the angels standing uh -huh. there was a one group of angels who stood in the middle of the US oh yes we know about where that could be not too far from here <laughs> it's called the New Madrid oh, I'm Fault. sorry yes it's called the it's New Madrid state? Fault it's pretty close to uh -huh. here yeah yeah so it, it's it's far enough away from us that it's we're good the New Madrid Fault right mm -hmm is the largest the middle. earthquake fault as far as power I see I think that's ever in the history don't you Mondo I agree yes sir. and they're warning and warning about it and if but it's something that hasn't gone off mm -hmm. in a long long time and if it goes it could split America in two mm -hmm. so that was that will the, happen the, if US plays a part in dividing Israel into two you know in the you, year, you the United feel States, God has spoke that to you I was shown that in the year 2013 yes God called us to do a conference in Israel yes so that particular year we did a conference at Mount Sinai Egypt and then the other half was in Jerusalem mm -hmm. so before the conference the Lord called me to fast for three days up on the mountains on Sinai on the third day of my fast you know early in the morning I just went out to sit on the rock to have my cup of tea mm -hmm. and meditating the scripture and while I was meditating the scriptures I just looked up to ponder that scripture when I saw a huge angel come and stand before me and he had a drawn sword in his hand and as I was looking at him a three-dimensional map of the United States appeared mm -hmm. beside him and he thrust his sword in the center of the US and it split into two and he said this will happen to the nation if it divides Israel into two mm. yeah I believe that I've heard that from another man of God that I I love and believe in mm -hmm. 
and he had this vision. Literally, he was driving down the highway and mm. saw it. I see. And saw this thing. And I think this is a confirmation of what we, what I have seen and what I believe. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I know you can't take much of this because it's going to be, you ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> and we're in the end times, people. We're in the time of trouble. We're in the final days. You know, this morning I get up and my devotional ends up being the, the book of Acts and the book of Joel and talking about the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. He says, I'm going to show signs and wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, earthquakes, fire and vapor and smoke, volcanoes, all of these things. I, I mean, but over my lifetime, most preachers never preached that part. They preach, and God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That's in the same piece of scripture. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And I believe he's going to bless everyone who can be blessed. He's going to pour out his spirit. He's going to literally save millions if they'll come to God. Right. Amen. But he says also, he said, that you're going to see a time at, when God's going to bless your sons and your daughters. But God says judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. And I believe with all of my heart that America has mocked God. I actually believe... And some believe that God chose this man. Absolutely. I, I was going to say, why did God choose him? I asked you first, do you think God chose Donald Trump to become our president of our United States? You know, in the year 2016, in the month of August, yeah. I was at a conference in Lancaster, California, and uh, I wasn't thinking or praying about the elections, so I, uh, because I was not focused on that. But one evening, another man of God was speaking, and I was just sitting in the meeting, and I was just praying, when I suddenly I felt in my spirit, I heard a voice say, come up. When I heard the word come up, my spirit was caught up to heaven. And I appeared at the council of the prophets. And Abraham was seated there, being the chairman of the council. Hmm. And when I stood on the right side of Abraham, and uh, as soon as I came there and I looked at Abraham, uh, just a little later, I saw the spirit of Donald Trump appear there. And Abraham looked at me and he said, it has been decided in heaven that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States of America. Oh. And I, I you know, I don't know much about American politics, who, who is running where, you know. <laughs> and although it was very popular that Hillary Clinton will be the most popular choice to be the president, that much I knew. Mm -hmm. And Abraham looked at me and he said, the reason why he has been chosen is because he will be like Cyrus who will rebuild this nation. God is giving this nation four years of grace. Four? Four years. Now this, this part that I'm just sharing with you was what revealed to me when I was in Moravian Falls. I, I just got to ask something. Please. Lancaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. California. Mm. Right. I don't know. <laughs> when I was going to prison, and when the government and all the people and the press came after me, mm. just like they're doing Donald Trump. Mm. The only people that came in were from Lancaster, California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
And I was in a fetal position praying to die. I don't know what I'm doing saying this. They came and took me in their car. I didn't want to live anymore. They made me come with them. Mm. And they poured in the wine and the oil on the Jericho Road, is a song we used to say. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones. And you keep saying Lancasters, and there's a lot of... I don't understand if there's a connection in Lancaster, why you're... But I know God, something happened to you there. I know that. I know... You're there, you were there for a reason. Yes. And God spoke more to you there. I'm, the I'm Lord telling has you something shown me, I don't know, but I know. The Lord showed me that Lancaster, California is one of the places of refuge yeah. chosen by God for the last day. Really? I yes. that. I used to go there as a kid and fish. Do you? We love Sorry. Lancaster. Lancaster. It's the high desert. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And, of course, beautiful people. <laughs> Well, there's that, God's, that God used in, in such a mighty way for you, Jim. And there is places, people, listen to what this man is saying now. There are cities of refuge, and they're not what the government says they are. That's right. There are places where God's people can go to and be safe. Amen. Yes. Do you believe that? Absolutely. In fact, you, you, you made a very important statement right now. Lancaster is not only a place of refuge, but it's going to be a place of great revival. Oh, really? going to come, yes. yes. It's so good to hear. You know, when I first came to the U.S. in 1991, we incorporated our ministry in Cincinnati, Ohio. So we were there for a few years. And then from Cincinnati, Ohio, we moved to San Francisco in California. And we were there for many years. And then when I went to Lancaster to speak at a conference, after the Lord showed me about this place, Lancaster, he said, now move to Lancaster and set up your base there and have a conference here every year. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Why would I come you all the far away to Kit? <laughs> you were, so you've had headquarters way. there. Yes. And the I didn't know that. Ah. No, we didn't. I'm sure you didn't. Mm -mm. It's not in the notes. It's not in the notes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Just say what you so want to say right when now. When the Lord told me to move to Lancaster, He said, "This place is going to be a place of refuge." And it's going to be a place of revival. And not only that, I will bring all my remnant people uh, to this place uh, to be taught and meet ready to meet the Lord as a bride. So that is why I always come to Lancaster in August every year to do a conference. And I never been, been to any other state or cities in the U.S., but only in Lancaster. For many years. My goodness. That's what we didn't know you. We didn't hear you. Mm -hmm. And I only heard you because somebody told me that you prophesied the Houston. We, we went to the floods. Right. We saw the floods. People mock when people prepare. Mm -hmm. But they weren't mocking us when we went to Houston. No. The houses are still not finished right thousands and thousands of people i'm jumping a little bit we'll go back where we are now sure why did the flood come to houston do you know that at all no i do not know why the floods came but when when we were flying from los angeles to houston throughout the entire journey i was praying very much because i was still very shaken by what the angel told me, that earthquake is going to strike in three places. And I was peaceless, very troubled, and I was praying. As soon as I came out of the plane and my foot stepped on, on the airport in Houston, 
very unmistakably i heard the voice of the lord saying this city will be devastated by a flood and i i thought to myself no you stepped out of the airplane into into the airport Houston, Houston airport. airport yes which means is as soon as my feet touched the soil yes of Houston yes that's when i heard the voice of the lord say this city will be devastated by a massive flood so i thought to myself lord not again <laughs> you just told me california is going to be attacked now this city and i didn't want to reveal this word at all mm. you know but until the lord very clearly told me during the conference in houston you must say what i told you about this city so you told them that night yes that their city was going to be underwater yes did they receive it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah how do you know that's how you know a prophet's a prophet if his prophecies come true is that right that's right, that's right. do you all know the bible yeah yeah that's what it's i'm shaking up here i don't know about you but i came to this meeting i knew all hell didn't want this show to go right and god's people need to start taking authority yes. and stopping the works of satan in your church in your homes yes, yes. There's too many people that just want to complain and say, oh, the sound's not right or this is not right. You better get right with God and get God's power because we are in the final days. Yes, we are. Good. Yeah. Wow. And so I watched that little, there's a video online. Mm -hmm. I guess that somebody shot it at that church who, mm -hmm. or wherever you were speaking in Houston. Houston, right? yeah. So there's a video Mm -hmm. And I saw it after the fact. Mm. But when was that video sh taken? 2015. 2015. Is that right? Is yes. he right? Yeah, of course he's right. <laughs> <laughs> he told me when he met me, we just met a few minutes ago in the green room. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just met. We just met, mm -hmm. haven't we? Yes. And he said, this is uh, some information. He said, your people have more information on me than the Secret Service. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your hand. Yes. I need prayer. <laughs> we were there in Houston, people. Yes. You, have, you that have not been there, you have no idea what happened to those people. Our dear sister who was here. Luann. She told it brilliantly on the air. I mean, we went into their homes. We went into the floods. We, we, we've seen it. I don't know if you had a chance to go back to where it was flooded or not. No. But what you prophesied came true. Luann did not she, complain or anything, but the water came up inside of her home and all the neighbors at this moment she was just here last week mm -hmm. and all her neighborhood all the are still outside their house the houses are it's inundation mm -hmm. this was an event of history the cost of this uh, event was I think at this stage, $190 billion. God is shaking this world. God is warning us. Yes. God used this man to step off an airplane in Houston, Texas, two years perhaps. Yes, yes. sir. Before. Yes, sir. You have to know something. The weathermen don't get it that good. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I'm serious. They don't. They can't. You're right. Only God. 